Tell him he is your son. Tell him he is the one that you worship. Tell him he is your only God. Tell him he is the one that goes ahead of you and remove every obstacle and remove every evil orchestrated trouble to put you down. Tell him he is your Alpha and the Omega. Tell him he is the one that knows your end from the beginning. Therefore, there is no trouble that the enemy can hide to destroy you. Yes, Lord, you are the one. Let Lord, you are the one. You are the monarch of the universe. You are the ancients of days. You are the bride and the morning star. Yes, Lord, you are the one. Yes, somebody worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship the one that will go through any trouble to set you free. Jesus went through humiliation. Jesus went through beating. Jesus went through crucifixion. Jesus went through death just to set you free. There is no trouble that this our God cannot go through to set you free. There is no trouble that this our God cannot face for your sake. The Bible says he is so rich in mercy and he loves you so much. Yes, Father, we worship you. Lord, we recognize you as our God, as our Lord. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Receive the glory. Receive the glory. Somebody just type, just type in the chat box, in the comment section, type the best name that you like to call God. You are not, your favorite name that you love to call God. Type in the chat box. Let us give glory to him. Let us give glory to him. Type, type the best name. No, not too many, just one. One of your favorite names that you describe God. I love to call him the Lord, my sustainer. Because since I was born, my life has been full of trouble. But he has sustained me. Sustained me in every situation. Somebody calls him El Shaddai. Others call him Oshimirata. Others call him Ebenezer, the Lord, my provider, El Elyon, Jesus, my protector, Elohim, El Shaddai, my protocol breaker, my father, my mighty man in battle, my, the Lord, my source, Jesus, my provider. Yes, let's go. Just call him, call him, call him, call him, call him that favorite name. Jehovah, my protector, my wonderful doctor, my father, the Lord, my provider, the Lord, my hope. Yes, yes, let's go. Let's worship him. Somebody says, my lover. Yes, yes, yes. Jehovah Jireh. Somebody calls him that. Somebody calls him the great I am that I am. Yes, let's go ahead. Father of the fatherless. Yes, Kabbalah Zikada. Yes, yes, the Lord my comforter. The Lord my healer. Let us go. Tell him, tell him how. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him, and Father, I love you so much that I have a favorite name for you. Yes, Lord, take the glory. Yes, Lord, take the glory. Take the glory. The lion of the tribe of Judah. My provider. My sufficiency. My redeemer. My banner. The protocol breaker. Yes, he is all of that and much more. He is all of that and much more. He is all of that and much more. Yes, he is your defender. Yes, he is your destiny changer. Yes, he is the covenant keeping God. Yes, he is the king of kings. He is the father of the fatherless. He is my safe place. Oh, my goodness. Yes, Lord. He is the voice of the voiceless. Yes, he is Jehovah over you. He will move above and beyond for your sake, for my sake. Yes, Lord, be glorified. Yes, Lord, be glorified. Receive the glory, Lord. We are here today because we love you so much. We are here today because you love us so much first and reconciled us back to you. We are here today, Lord, because you are our source. We are nothing without you. We are here today, Lord, because we know that when we cry unto you, you hear us. We are here, Lord, because without you, we are nothing. We are absolutely nothing without you. Take the glory, Lord. Yes, somebody be ready, be engaged. His presence is already here. Yes, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Take the glory. 
Oh, Baba is so happy. Take the glory. Nothing moves the heart of God like praise and worship. You know, there are some prayer points that when you pray, God sent his angels. But there is a time when you worship God and praise in your entire realm where God himself shows up for you. God says, no, with this kind of worship, with this kind of praise, I cannot send Angel Michael. I cannot send Angel Gabriel. Me, myself, I will show up for this one. That is the power of worship. Show me a worshiper and a praiser. I will show you somebody who can move the hand of God. I will show you somebody who can touch the heart of God. And God himself will rise and intervene. Yes, Father, we worship you. Receive the glory, Lord. Yes, Father. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, break your Bibles to Psalms 34, verse 17. Let's get straight to ministration. We will skip testimonies today. Let's get straight to ministration and prayers. Psalms 34, verse 17. And the Bible says, you can see the verse on your screen. The Bible says, the Lord hears his people when they cry to him for help. He rescues them from all their trouble. This will be somebody's portion today in the name of Jesus. The Lord will hear you because you are his son and you are his daughter. As you cry for help, the Lord will intervene and rescue you from all your trouble in the name of Jesus. So this month of March, in this fasting and prayers edition, the theme for this month is, Oh Lord, deliver me from all trouble. And we have been looking at pathways for you to be delivered from all troubles. There are some pathways that you need to go through to experience deliverance. Our God is a God of patterns. The kingdom of God is driven by protocols and patterns. There are certain things in the kingdom as a child of God you will not experience unless you are able to align yourself. Unless you are able to align yourself with the patterns laid down in the divine book we call the Bible. We are a ministry where God created this ministry for the purpose of reconciling professionals and entrepreneurs unto him. And for that to happen, God needs to pass through our careers and businesses to establish his kingdom on earth. And for us to experience certain dimensions in our careers, in our businesses, as kingdom entrepreneurs, we need to understand certain kingdom pathways, certain kingdom patterns that we need to align ourselves with so we can begin to see the move of God in our life. And today, in day two of this fasting and prayers, we are looking at the pathway of crying out to the Lord Almighty. If you are going to be delivered from all your troubles, no matter the situation, you need to master the pathway of crying out to the Lord for deliverance. And our key verse is in Psalm 54, verse 17. The Lord his people when, when when they cry out until you master the protocol, the process, the divine process of crying out, God will not hear you. And whoever that God cannot hear, God cannot help. My goodness, whoever that God cannot hear, God cannot help. It is your responsibility as a son. It is your responsibility as a daughter. If you have trouble in school, you need to come back and tell your parents. If you don't tell them, your parents will not know how to intervene. If you don't have the right books in school, you have the right materials, you need to come and tell them, Papa, look, I don't have a pen. I don't have a book. And if, when your father hears, he will give you money to go get the book that you need. You need to understand the pattern, the protocol of cry now. So in day two, we are looking at cry out to the Lord Almighty. For you to be delivered from all your troubles, child of God. As a kingdom entrepreneur, if you are going through trouble in your business, as a kingdom professional, if you are going through trouble in your career, you need to understand the pathways of crying out. You need to understand the divine pattern of crying out to the Lord Almighty. And we are assured we are double assured, we are divinely assured that when his 
people cry out, he will hear them and help them. When his people cry out, he will rescue them from all their troubles. I prophesy into your life as you cry out today and any time from today that you cry out any time you're in trouble, the Lord God Almighty will hear you and rescue you from all them troubles in the name of Jesus. The Almighty will hear you and rescue you from all troubles in the name of Jesus. Even if it means that he will send somebody to rescue you, the the Lord will send somebody, the Lord will arrest somebody, touch the heart of somebody and send that person to rescue you in the name of Jesus. The children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt and they cried out. For 40 years they were in bondage when they started crying out and the Lord heard their cry and the Lord heard their cry and raised someone called Moses. When God raised him, through Moses, God passed through a man and he used him to help the people and deliver them from their bondage. He rescued them from their troubles. He rescued them from slavery. He rescued them from poverty. He rescued them from managing life. He rescued them from average life. He rescued them into a promised land. He rescued them into a promised land. I decree over your life. In the name of Jesus, God is raising someone God is raising your Moses for you. That person will come by the power of the Holy Ghost and the person will deliver you from every form of trouble in the name of Jesus. There are some people, all you need is one divine helper. All you need is for God to arrest one divine helper, touch his heart and send him your way. And when the person comes, automatically all your troubles end. Automatically all your troubles begin to end. Oh my father, my maker, whoever needs to invade my life for my troubles to end, Lord, send that person unto me in the name of Jesus. Oh my father, my maker, whoever needs to enter my life for the troubles to end, like you send Moses, oh God, release that person today in the name of Jesus. Anything can happen when you understand how to cry, child of God. Anything can happen when you understand the protocol of crying out to the Lord. Amen. Hear me and hear me very well. Amen. The trouble you do not confront will destroy you. The trouble you do not confront can kill you. You are married. The trouble you do not confront in your marriage can destroy your marriage. You are a career person. The trouble you do not confront can destroy your career. The trouble that you sense and you do not confront can destroy your business. Many of us have been in trouble and we have been crying out to men. Now it is time to cry out unto the one that make men. Yes, many people have been in trouble year in, year out. And they have never been delivered from that trouble because they like, they like to cry out to men only. They want to go and cry out to men, and men will disappoint them. Men will use them. Men will even destroy them. Now it is time to understand the pathway of crying out unto the Lord. Cry out to the maker of men. Cry out to the one that holds the heart of kings in his hands. Hear me and hear me very well, kingdom entrepreneur and professional. One of the most important mysteries to understand on how to be delivered from trouble is the mystery of crying. The mystery, crying is a mystery. Crying is a mystery. The cry that we see in Psalm 34 verse 17 is a mystery. And if you are going to be delivered from any trouble that will come your way in this life, as long as you are alive, you need to understand the mystery of crying. Crying is a mystery in the kingdom of God. Let me tell you something. When you understand how to cry, there's no trouble you can be afraid of. I always say something funny. Any trouble can come my way. As long as I can enter the secret place and begin to yakata yakata, that trouble will go. I am not afraid of any trouble. Yes, you are permitted to come, but we are going to see who will stand tall. We are going to see who will come out on top. As long as I can cry, I know that trouble will go away. That is my conviction. Let me tell you something, child of God. There are some troubles that you cannot stop from coming. But the good news is, if you know what to do, you will come out of that trouble a victor. There are some things you are going through right now you did not bargain. 
like we said yesterday, there are some troubles that will come to you because of your bad habits, bad choices, bad attitude, because of your mistakes, those troubles come unto you. Then there are some troubles that you have, you have no idea. Some people you are born into trouble because your parents were serving witch doctors and, and native doctors. You are born into a family that evil gods and demons and witches fight that family. You inherit the trouble. You are you, you, you did not know. You need to understand how to cry to be delivered from that trouble. There are some of you, your close friends, even your family members are jealous of you. Some have even gone to the extent of looking for, for poison to destroy you, to kill you out of jealousy and wickedness. You did not invite that trouble. The only thing that you did was that God blessed you and you became successful and they got angry that trouble started coming. You need to understand the dynamics, the kingdom dynamics of crying out unto the Lord. And I prophesy unto you, after today, from this very moment, when you begin to cry, the Lord will fulfill his scriptures over your life. He will hear you and rescue you from any trouble in the name of Jesus. You know, one thing I love about all troubles is that it did not talk about big trouble or small trouble. Any form of trouble you can cry out to. Any, even, let, let me use a funny example there. A funny example. If you are married and your husband is not taking very well and you are angry, that's trouble. Say, Lord, come and deliver me from this kind of trouble. Let my husband be taking me. <laughs> right? I just have an analogy to explain. You can bring anything to your father. How, no matter how big, how small, bring it to the father. He said, all trouble. I want you to understand this child of God. The Lord leads by his word. When you cry out to him in faith, according to his word, he will deliver you. Hear me and hear me very well. The Lord does not lead by your emotions. The Lord does not lead by your wishing and your complaining. No, the Lord leads by his word. When you cry out to him in faith, according to his word, in you cry out in faith, he will deliver you. What does it mean to cry out? Oh my goodness, somebody get ready to pray. The presence is so tangible. The atmosphere is so different today. Get ready to cry out. Get ready to cry out. What does it mean to cry out? To cry out means to call on to God for help in time of trouble. Yes, to call unto God for help in time of trouble. To cry out means to invite divine intervention in your life in the midst of chaos and trouble. Yes, that's the meaning of crying out. To invite divine intervention, invite the power of God, invite the presence of God in the midst of trouble and chaos. Peter was going through chaos when he was about to sink. And he stretched forth his hand. Lord, help me. Pull me out of this water before I sink. That's the meaning of crying out. To cry out, which is the one I want to dwell on. To cry out means to create time and intentionally tarry in the presence of God in the form of prayer because of any trouble that is causing you pain. That's the meaning of crying out. Another meaning of crying out is you intentionally bring your time to seek the face of God. You intentionally create time to seek the face of God for any trouble that you are going through that is causing you pain. That is crying out. What do I mean? You are going through a particular problem. You are going through a particular situation. You have noticed that certain things are not going out. It is beyond, to cry out here is beyond just doing morning prayers for five and ten minutes. This kind, this dimension of crying out is where you intentionally create time and say, look, because of this trouble, eh, I am setting aside three days. 
midnight from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. I am going to pray. I am going to speak in tongues. I am going to put scriptures. I am going to prophesy. I am going to face this problem for the next three days from 12 a.m. to 1 a.m. I am going to face this problem in the spiritual. I am going to stand in the place of prayer. I am going to stand on the altar of God and I am going to end this problem. I am going to end this problem. That is the meaning of crying out. Crying out also means you can decide for the next five days. You will leave your house. You will go to your church where you fellowship and pray for two hours, pray for three hours for a particular problem. For five days, it's between you are God and that problem. For five days, you are engaging a dimension of God against that problem. For five days, you have made up your mind that your God will show up and that problem will give way. That is the meaning of crying out. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus said that this kind of demon does not go out except, except by prayer and fasting. Hear me and hear me very well, child of God. There are certain situations in your life, they will not go away until you create time and leave the world, until you create time, you retreat, retreat, cut out distractions and begin to cry out begin to fast and begin to pray. This trouble, you will not swallow me. I'm going to end you. This trouble, I will come out a victor. This trouble, I will come out number one. This trouble, I am coming out the head and not the tail. This trouble, I am coming out according to the counsel of God and according to the will of God. But this kind of demon does not go out except by fasting and prayer. But this kind of trouble, this kind of chaos does not go out except by prayer and fasting. In these three days that we have created time to cry out in the place of fasting and prayers, I prophesy unto your life any challenge, any trouble that has resisted any form of, the, of intervention. According to the authority of the word of God, I command that trouble to give way today in the name of Jesus. Today marks the end of that trouble. You are entering the season of a new beginning. You are entering the season of testimonies in the name of Jesus. My Bible says that God has put all things under our feet. I stand on the authority of that revelation. All things are under our feet including troubles uh, by authority i command every trouble to give way in the name of jesus cry out create time i was talking to one lady and i said you are still joking because life has not taught you a lesson I was putting her on a few days of fasting and prayer as led by the Holy Spirit. Her life was a mess. She is a firstborn. Her life is a mess and all of that. And she is tired. No. Oh, when you look at her life consistently, you see the, the evil hand of the enemy ruling over her life. Evil altar controlling her life. Literally controlling her life. And I told her, look, you need to seek the face of God. You need to stay away from food. You need to fast and pray. You need to enter a dimension of fellowship and face your life. Face your life with God in you, with intentionality. And the enemy that is destroying you. Cry out to the Lord. There's somebody you are listening to me right now. You need, even after these three days of fasting and prayers, you need to step aside again and cry out for them. Who just received instruction now to do a four days fasting and prayers after this? Like right in the, like in the last two minutes, you just received your heart. You just felt your heart at eight. Do four days fasting and prayers for this particular problem. Who is that? Who is that? That's the Holy Spirit ministering to you. Go and do it. You will see a different dimension. 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 Child of God, when you study the Bible, you will see that the Lord hears the prayers of those who love Him. From experience, 
I know by first-hand experience that the Lord hears the prayers of those who have submitted to him and love him. No matter where you are right now, hear me very well, child of God. No matter where you are right now, no matter what circumstances you, 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 you are in right now, if you master the, the, the mystery of crying out to the Lord, you intentionally create time to cry out to the Lord, he will hear you when you cry. God always hears the cries of his children. God always hears the cry of his people. The Bible says our God is not the man that should love. So if the Bible says that the Lord hears his people when they cry to him for help, I have no doubt that Abba Father is going to hear you when you cry. Today, in this very session, as we begin to pray, divine intervention will start happening. Miraculous intervention will start happening. Whether you are sick, as we cry out, God will start healing you. Whether there is something you have been seeking after today, you will start seeing a shift in that thing you have been crying out. Because I know, because we have come together, we combine our faith and we hold on to the word of God. We are entering a different dimension. Hear me very well. We can take great comfort that our God will never leave us or forsake us. We can take great comfort that our God is always near us. Our God is always ready to give us strength and to sustain us because he is always ready to hear us when we cry for help. When we are brokenhearted, God hears our cry. When we are stranded, God hears our cry. When we are in any form of trouble, God Yes, our cry. God hears our cry. Whatever is going wrong right now in your career as a kingdom professional, whatever is going wrong right now in your business as an entrepreneur, whatever is going wrong right now in your finances, whatever is going wrong right now in your family, the comfort and the word I have for you is when we are brokenhearted and we cry out, he hears us. When we are stranded and we cry out in faith, he hears us. How do I know? There is a gentleman in Luke chapter 18. When you study from verse 38 down to 41, this is the man that cried out, son of David, have mercy. When you study the scriptures, you will hear the Bible says in verse 38, the Bible says, and he cried out saying, he cried out saying, somebody, you must be ready to cry and say. Until you cry and say, don't expect an answer. That's why prayer life is one of your greatest assets. It can be distorted in my day, but you see my prayer time, no, 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 no. Everything in my prayer time is very critical. As long as you can cry and stay unto the Lord, anything can happen. Never of somebody who can pray. Mm, no, 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 never do that. Never of somebody who can pray. Let me tell you, if you are minimizing somebody in your life right now, and that person is a prayerful person, go and apologize and be that person's friend. Though. That person's life can turn around anytime. That person's life can turn around anytime. I can tell you from experience. I am somebody I've been written off. Because I was born out of wedlock, trust me, I was, the book questioned my future. A lot of things I have made, I'll give you many examples that people did not believe what I would turn out to be. But when I found Jesus, when I found Jesus, he redecorated my life. This man, this man who was blind, in Luke chapter 18, verse 38 to 41, the Bible says, and he cried. Ah, my goodness. 
he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He cried out, have mercy on me. And the Bible says, and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. It is said that like, like, like maybe right now where you are, you want to pray in tongues, your neighbors are laughing at you, your neighbors are telling you to stop praying aloud. They are telling things that are rebuking you not to cry. Somebody like me, if you call me and tell me news, anything, anywhere, like some of you, just text me, oh, this is going wrong. Anywhere I find myself, I will just find anywhere and just pray for you. I, I, I just I just pray with you. I don't think I just pray anywhere, even if my own problem. I sense a problem, I will just look, so that I will enter a toilet and pray. I don't care who he is. That is your problem. You are doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. I know my solution, you know your solution. Rebuke me all you like. I will yakata and pray. I will speak in tongues. I will enter another dimension and begin to sort the things out spiritually before the physical intervention. Some of you, you, you have stopped crying because people have been rebuking you. Some of you, your friends have called you church boy, church girl. You are feeling ashamed. You are ashamed of your own destiny. How can you be ashamed of the one who holds your destiny and your future? How can you be ashamed of the only one who can give you an expected end? They rebuke him. They said, stop shouting, stop shouting. Hey, hey. But the Bible says in verse 39, the Bible says, but he cried so much more. He cried so much more. Somebody, you need to go and cry so much more. Maybe you have prayed for that thing just for three days fasting and prayers. You need to go and add seven days. So much more. If you add seven days and it doesn't go, you need to add 14 days. So much more. I have done that many times. I will tell you guys, if I'm praying for something, if I don't receive an answer from God, I'm not stopping. And the way I deal with God, answers come in two ways. Either it's a yes or he gives me an instruction. Instruction can be wait. Instruction can be it's not yet time. It could be change strategy. Change. Stop doing what they are doing. Do it the other way. But by all means, I will keep on praying. You know? I will keep on, even with 300 days, now me and you. But our God is so loving. Our God is so faithful. Our God is so merciful that when you open your mouth and cry as his son, as his daughter, he will hear you immediately. The point is, many of us don't cry out. The point is, many of us visit God. We beat God. Once a week, once a month. Even sometimes you forget like three months. Say, hey, I've not prayed like for three months today. Oh, oh. Then you want to come and have the same results. Like people who fellowship and cry out every day. No, God loves everybody. But we are not the same in the spiritual realms. And the only thing that differentiates is how much we fellowship with him on the consistent basis. It, even in your house, even in your father's house, a child or a daughter who is always available for the fathers, follows instructions, helps in the house, is obedient. Whether you like it or not, parents will always love any child like that. If you are the disobedient one, the stubborn one, the parents will just have general love for you. You know that parents have general love for all their kids. There's general love. They may not tell you, but there's general love. As long as they give birth to you, they are stuck with you. You can be stubborn up and down. They will love you generally. But there are some people that they may get additional benefits because they are more obedient. They are more lovely. They are more caring. All of us, God loves us generally when, when, the, when it comes to salvation. But there's a higher dimension in the spirit. The more you obey, the more you sacrifice, the more you tarry, the more you fellowship, the more you, you, you serve. I'm not talking about works. I'm talking about this is who you have become in Christ Jesus. This is who you have become because of what Jesus did on the cross. You love the Father so much and the Father loves you so much and you fellowship. The Bible says, they rebuke this man. He cried out so much more. Somebody, may, you need to go and cry out so much more. And he said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says something very powerful. Hear this. The Bible reckons, the Bible says, and Jesus stood. Ah, oh my goodness. Until you cry out, Jesus will not stand. Jesus was going somewhere else. Do you know that? Jesus was not coming to heal this man. You know that? This man forcefully aligned himself 
in Jesus' agenda by crying. Jesus did not originally go out to heal this man. No. This man, because I told them, you are crying, can force God to change his plan because of you. Yes. You are crying. You are crying, can force God to re. To re and God is not a stand God. He can do anything at any time, as long as you and I are available. The Almighty Jesus, the King of Kings, altered his schedule, his plan, because somebody cried out. The Bible said he stood. He said Jesus already passed him. Jesus passed him. Because of his, his cry. And because he cried so much more, the Bible said Jesus stood. As you cry out today, Jesus will stand for you. Jesus will stand for you in the name of Jesus. The King of Kings will stand for you. Because somebody cried, Jesus stood, the Bible records, and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he has come here, he asked him, Jesus asked him, saying, What will thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Kabbalah Vekada. Some of you, you need to cry so you get the Father's attention. Then you can lay down your request. Notice this. He cried for mercy first. There are some of you, there are some of us. When we get into the place of prayers, we need to cry for mercy. Lord, have mercy. All my unrighteousness and iniquity. Anywhere I have gone against your will, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Then you need to worship him. This man worshiped Jesus. He said, son of David. That's one of the names of Jesus. He worshiped Jesus. So he got attention through the cry for mercy and worship. When he got the Jesus now stood, the Bible says, until you get the attention of God, you cannot rebuke that which is the trouble. You need to cry out. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord in prayer will be saved. Ah, that's crying out. Romans chapter 10, verse 18. Whoever, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, in prayer will be saved. When you call upon the name of the Lord in prayer, he will save you. Whatever chaos, whatever destruction, whatever evil pit, whatever trouble, he will save you as long as you cry out and call on the name of the Lord. And how do you call on the name of the Lord? In the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Child of God, you need to understand the protocol of crying. You need to understand the pathway of crying out to the Almighty. That is one of the pathways that will lead to your deliverance of all troubles. That is one of the pathways that will lead to your deliverance of all troubles. The Bible says in Psalms 25 verse 17. Ah, oh my goodness. Psalms 25 verse 17. The Holy Spirit is moving right now. Divine intervention. Divine intervention right now. This is a prophetic word. Divine intervention right now. The Lord is intervening in some cases right now. The Lord is intervening in some cases right now. Divine intervention. By his mercy and by his grace, the Lord is intervening on some long-standing cases. That's what I hear in my spirit. Long-standing cases. Divine, under this atmosphere, under this atmosphere, any long-standing challenge, any long-standing trouble, any long-standing troubles by the authority of the word, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let that trouble give way in the name of Jesus. Let that trouble give way in the name of Jesus. Let that trouble give way in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I told you guys earlier, this will be a prophetic ministration. Kibala. Yes. Psalms 25 and 17. The Bible says, the troubles of my heart are multiplied. Bring me out of my distress. That's the, you 
You see, David was crying out. David was telling God, in, in, David was crying. Oh, my father, the troubles of my heart have multiplied. Like there are some of, some, some of you here. You feel as if all the troubles on earth are on your head. Financially, you are in trouble. Relationship-wise, you are in trouble. Family-wise, you are in trouble. Career-wise, you are in trouble. So as if everything around you is trouble. Your life is from trouble to trouble. Trouble to trouble. David there in Psalms 25 and 17, David is telling God, you know, and he, he was doing this in the place of prayer. He was doing this on the altar of prayer. He was, if he was in the place of crying, he was in the place of prayer. He said, oh Lord, the troubles of my heart are multiplied. Lord, the troubles, the troubles of my life are multiplying. Lord, the troubles, the troubles of my life are multiplying. And then he said, bring me out of my distress. Lord, have mercy and bring me out of my distress. Lord, you have said in your word that as long as I am your son, as long as I am your daughter, when I cry out for help, you will help me. You will rescue me from all the troubles. Lord, bring me out, bring me out of my distress. Lord, I intervene and end every trouble. Somebody, this is how you cry out. So I, this is one of my favorite ways to pray. When I begin to, 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 to pass scriptures in the spirit, I begin to tell God, this is what you said here. And then here, in to, to begin to, the, the presence begins to change. Because you, are, you, you don't pray amiss when you pray the scriptures of the place of revelation and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. The Lord is intervening. Somebody just caught a revelation right now. The Lord is intervening. The Lord is intervening in somebody's life right now. Yes, Jesus. David was crying. My father, troubles of my heart are multiplied. My father, troubles are multiplying. Last week, I had financial trouble. Now, this week, Lord, is my son, is my daughter. Father, today now is my car. It's, it's problem at work. Lord, the troubles of my heart are multiplying. Lord, arise, arise. Bring me out of this distress. Bring me out of this distress. That this was David's prayer and it's somebody's prayer right now. And I know it's God that is too faithful to fail. I know it's God that is faithful from generation to generation. I know a God that is an everlasting father. I know a God that is not a man that he should lie. I know a God that when he says yes is yes. I know a God that is shown up for his children. I know a God that is so full of mercy and he loves me so much. I know a God that when you cry unto him, bring me out of my distress. He will hear you and he will rescue you from all your distress, from all your troubles. By the authority, I stand on the revelation of the word of God in Ephesians, which says that the Lord is so rich in mercy and the Lord is so much because of his love. You are being delivered from every form of trouble in the name of Jesus. I know a young lady in the Bible who cried out. I know a lady who cried out and there was a miraculous intervention. Her name is Hannah. Hannah was in trouble. Hannah was in trouble. Hannah did not have a child. Trouble, 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 trouble. Hannah did not have a child. And then she also had a manja, manja, camera for it. Banja? Yes. Step. Second wife. The husband had a second wife. Hannah was in trouble. He did not have a baby, trouble. Her fellow co-wife was laughing at her, trouble. Maybe people in the community were laughing at her, double trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Trouble in her own heart. Trouble from her fellow wife. Trouble from the community. Trouble from in-laws. Trouble from friends. Trouble everywhere. Distress everywhere. But Hannah did something. Hannah understood the divine pathways of crying out unto the Lord for help. Hannah understood the, the divine pathway of crying out unto the Lord. 
The Bible says in First Samuel chapter 1, when you begin to study from chapter 10, the Bible says Hannah was so sad that she cried the whole time. She was praying to the Lord. She was crying in the temple. She was crying. She was crying in the presence of God. She was crying in the place of prayer. She was not crying to friends. She was not crying and complaining. No, she was crying to a God who hears and intervenes. She was crying to the God who can rescue her from that trouble. She was crying to the God who can rescue her from that distress of not having a child. The Bible says Hannah cried the whole time. She was praying to the Lord. She was praying to the Lord. The whole time here also means that she was praying to the Lord until the trouble ends. She said, look, until my Samuel comes, I'm not going to end. My father, my maker, me and you today, we don't wear one brother. I will seek you. I will fellowship with you. I will fast. I will pray. I will submit to you. I will, I will allow myself under the leading of the Holy Spirit. I will study the word by I am in this case, in this trouble, I am coming out victorious. I am not going to allow this trouble to rule my life. Me, I will address this trouble in the place of prayer. And the Bible says, she made a special promise to God and said, Lord, all powerful. This is another dimension. See, Hannah activated another dimension of God. Look at how he called. He said, Lord, all powerful. And I have taught you guys, when you, the more you know about God, the more you know how to activate the different dimensions of God. He said, Lord, all powerful. She was activating a dimension of God that is powerful more than any trouble, that is powerful more than any circumstance. Why didn't she say, uh, 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 um, um, uh, the Lord, my peace? Right, she, you need to always under, and that's why you need when you pray, when, 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 when you pray with the help of the Holy Spirit, you begin. The, no, nobody helps you pray better than the Holy Spirit. Never start your prayer without asking the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, this is a simple statement, eh? and He's there. As long as you are conscious and you are doing it by faith, just say, Holy Ghost, I'm about to pray. Help me to pray. Equip me to pray. Set my soul on fire to pray. Because the Bible says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our infirmities. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And we need to ask Him anytime we are about to pray. Holy Spirit, take over. Holy Spirit, take over as I am about to pray. Hannah was taken over by the Holy Spirit. Lord all-powerful. She activated the all-powerful dimension of God. And when God shows up in your life as all-powerful, there is no trouble that can stand Oh, oh my goodness. When God shows up as all-powerful, Lord means ownership. Lord, landlord, owner of the house. Oh, Lord, Lord means ownership. Like, like landlord. Lord all-powerful. The one that owns me and owns the universe. And the one who is all-powerful show up in my life. When the Lord Almighty shows up in your life, barrenness disappears. And, and when barrenness disappears, you don't just get a normal child. You get an extraordinary child. You not only have a child. Hannah is one of the greatest prophets on earth. There is no way in the Bible where Penina, who was the co-wife of Hannah, we don't hear anything about Penina's children. But we hear about Samuel. When the Lord all-powerful shows up, he gives you an all-powerful gift. He gives you something that is not normal. But you need to cry out like Hannah did. You need to cry out like Hannah did. We are about to pray. You need to cry out. We are entering the phase of crying out. Psalms 25 verse 18. Psalms 25 verse 18. I hope you are always taking down this scripture because since you are fasting the whole day, these scriptures are also there for you to take them down and meditate the whole day. Read, read, read them, read them and meditate and pray. When you are when 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 praying for five minutes, ten minutes, pick them out, okay? Psalms 25 verse 18. 
The Bible says this was David crying out to the Lord. Look upon my affliction and my trouble. That was David crying out. Father, my father, my maker, look upon my affliction and my trouble. Ah, you came at that. Look upon my affliction and my trouble. Somebody you need to see. You need to wake up. You need to wake up. Like that, like, like that blind man. He was saying, Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, look upon my affliction. Look upon my blindness and do something. Look upon my affliction and do something. Arise, O oh Son of David. And then the same Psalms 25 verse 20. The Bible says, guard my soul and rescue me. Yes, that's still the protocol of crying. Lord, guard my soul and rescue me. Guard my mind. Guard my heart. Guard my will and rescue me. Lord, do not allow. The meaning of guarding my soul means, Lord, do not allow this trouble to destroy my mind. Do not allow this trouble to break my heart. Do not allow this trouble to break my will of living. Yes, this is a very important teaching, something that I will teach them. Many people commit suicide because their soul was not guarded. People commit suicide, give up on life. And people that give up on life have lost the will to live. Your soul is made up of three elements, your mind, your heart, and your will. When you lose the will to leave, you can decide to commit suicide. So when, it, when, when, when David was saying in Psalms 25 verse 20, guard my soul. David was telling God, Father, protect my mind. Don't allow this trouble to put my mind in perpetual negativity and hatred. Lord, guard my heart. Guard my heart for me. Don't allow this trouble to break my heart. Don't allow this trouble to shatter, to shatter my heart. That's why there are some people that when, when they're in a relationship and, and the, the relationship ends, they feel like life has ended. It's because their relationship has broken their heart. That my soul means, Lord, don't allow this trouble to take away my will to leave. Don't allow this trouble to take away my ability to be relentless, to be to be consistent, and to be resistant. Lord, guard my will. Take my take my will and put it under Your will. David was crying out to God, "Guard my soul and rescue me." And then he said, "Do not let me be ashamed or disappointed, for I have taken refuge in You." Yes, Lord, do not allow this trouble to win. Do not allow this trouble to succeed. Do not allow this trouble to, to achieve its aim. I have taken refuge in you. Show up, my father, my maker. Show up and rescue me from this trouble. Show up and rescue me from shame and disappointment. You made the doctor's report to your and when you study your Bible carefully, you understand that David, went through all types of troubles and challenges. David fought 66 battles and won all of them because God rescued him from all troubles. God rescued him from all challenges. We are about to cry out. If you are ready to cry out, time is time to pray. Comment is time to pray. Comment is time to pray. Are you ready for this? Yes, it's time to cry out. Divine intervention happened a few moments ago. By God's mercy and grace, God just delivered somebody from chaotic trouble. You're going to see a sign today, tomorrow. You're going to see a sign today, tomorrow. A strange grace, a strange divine intervention just happened in the last couple of minutes. The Lord told me that it will be a prophetic ministration. It means that there's something you, you never need to say amen, but God stands on the word, on his word that's being released. I'm not ministering my word. I was ministering the word of God as led by the Holy Spirit. So God's aligned. God aligns with his word as anybody who, when you receive the word by faith, when you receive the word by faith, God now stands on that word as the legitimate platform to do that which he's supposed to do in your life. 
Some people, God just intervened. Strange divine intervention. You're going to hear strange testimony. Some things that you forgot. Strange intervention. Troubles that you did not know whether to go left or right. It will start turning out in your favor in the name of Jesus. Yes, it's time to pray. Yes, Father. Yes, we're going to worship God. Just open your mouth and begin to worship God. Open your mouth and begin to worship God as this song prays. Yes, worship Him, worship Him, worship Him. You can unmute yourself now, begin to worship Him. Join and worship Him. Bow down to Him. Father, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. Yes, somebody worship Him. Worship God for His love. Praise Him for being so merciful. Magnify His name. Acknowledge His greatness. Father, we worship You. Father, we worship You. in the name of Jesus. Now hear me very well. Hear me very well. We are going to we are going to pray the prayer, the worship of Anna. I just feel led in my spirit. Now I want to just declare this simple statement. Declare by faith. You're going to declare, you are Lord all powerful over my life. And if there's a particular trouble you are going through, you can begin to tell God, you are Lord all powerful over this trouble. You mention the name of trouble. And I recognize that the Lord is the Lord all powerful over barrenness. I don't know what you are going through, but you are going to worship God this way. Tell him you don't declare, don't want to declare anything to him. You are so powerful over my life. You are so powerful over my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. You are so powerful over my life. You are not powerful over my career. You are Yes, somebody from Pakistan Somebody declare that I'm not the 
Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, there's the strange movement of the Holy Spirit. There's the strange move of God right now. There's the strange move of God right now. A few people are under the anointing. You are just shaking. You are under the anointing. God is doing something. Kabbalah zikada. Something is going to happen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That woman that God is intervening in your marriage. God is showing up for you as the Lord of power. That person that a project has been stuck, the Lord is showing up for you as all powerful. That person that there have, have been unnecessary delays in your finances, the Lord is showing up for you as all powerful. That person that a particular sickness, a particular medical challenger has been there for a while, the Lord is showing up for you as all powerful. Person, that person that has been living from hand to mouth, God is showing up for you as all powerful in the name of Jesus. That person that has gone through rejection, career opportunities rejection, God is showing up for you as all powerful in the name of Jesus. That person that has been rejected visa a few times, the Lord is showing up for you as all powerful. Yes, Lord, by your anointing. Yes, Lord. God is showing up for some people in a strange way. I was just speaking that the Holy Spirit was leading. God is showing up for some people in a strange way. God is showing up for some people in a strange way. Yes, Lord. How about that Zikada? Yes, Lord. I need to pray for them. If, if you fell under the anointing, one, and two, if a tear dropped out of your eye while you were praying, indicate. I need to pray for you. If you fell under the anointing, that's a different set of people. But two, if a tear dropped out of your eye as you were praying, indicate quickly. I need to speak over your life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, you that those people that a tear, tear, a tear dropped out of your eyes. That is something going on. There is a divine intervention. Whatever, whatever, whatever that has been there as a perpetual pain and trouble, today marks the end in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. By the authority Amen. of the Holy Ghost, me condo zekende zikabale. This beginning. Of God, Amen. 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 Amen.
You are ushered into a new beginning. <laughs> God, the Lord Please. God, all oh, power has heard your cry. <laughs> God, all oh, power. We will Just... celebrate God for you. We will celebrate God for you. Whatever you want right now will end in the testimony. In the name of Jesus. Whatever you want right now will end in the testimony. In the name of Jesus. Come on, this divine intervention back to new beginning. Divine intervention back to new beginning. This divine intervention back to new beginning. You are about to see the Lord more powerful in your life. You are about to see the Lord more powerful in your life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Strange divine intervention. Strange divine intervention. God is doing something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working on so many. Please be connected. The atmosphere today is so open for whoever is ready. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Lord, thank you. Yes, I am still with those people that indicated something is still going on right now. Just remain connected. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Show up for them as the Lord all power. Father, by your mercy and your grace, show up for them as the Lord all power. Yes. Season of glory. I hear season of glory. Season of glory. Season of glory. Somebody you have been perpetually in season of crying and, and things not going right. The Lord is ushering you into a season of glory. This person you felt under the anointing, please draw closer in the place of prayer so that this season should not pass by and you are disconnected. Hear me very well. Hear me very well. This particular person, when you look at your life in the last three years, there have been a series of bad news, bad news, trouble, trouble, trouble. But this very morning you felt under the anointing. The Lord is pushing you into a season of glory. Don't joke with your prayer life. So that this season should not pass you by. You may need mm, you may need to stay away from some people like a boyfriend, this is a lady. <laughs> Either you choose your boyfriend or you choose your season of glory. I'm not saying you go and be wicked. Just tell him, look, if you are serious about this relationship, let's move it right. Don't miss your season of glory. Don't miss your season. People get to miss their season of glory because they are not connected. They are not in the present. Because if you are not connected to your soul or you are not fellowshipping with your soul, you will not know when he's about to do something. You will not know. He will not be even be he will not he will not be able to lead you to that season, to that place where your manifestation will happen because you are not even available. Yes. Every other person that the Holy Spirit passed over you and you felt over fell under the anointing. Whatever that the Lord has started, I decree and I declare as a priest over your life, it will end in praise in the name of Jesus. It will end in praise in the name of Jesus. Ah, oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for lavishing your presence so much this morning. Thank you, God, for loving us so much and lavishing your presence. The presence of God is so real. So real today. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. Follow me carefully. We are going to pray. The prayer point is from our key, key verse. Psalms 34, verse 17. The Bible says, The Lord hears his people when they cry to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. We are going to pray, Lord, your word says you always hear your people when they call to you for help. Lord, rescue me today from all troubles in the name of Jesus. You are putting back the word to him. Lord, honor your word. Rescue me today from all troubles in the name of Jesus. Rescue me today from all troubles 
in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. My Father, my God, your word says, Lord, in Psalm 19, in Psalm 17. Lord, you are people when they call to you. Lord, you raise the name of God. Lord, you raise the name of God. Lord, you raise the name of God. All of what God has yeah, said yeah, that when you pray, he will hear you and rescue you. And God said, My better, the Lord is my God. And then he said, That God, you are a sign that when you are free for prayer, I start to go here and you will rescue the in the name of Jesus, I prophesy the Lord is rescuing somebody from any evil counsel in the name of Jesus. Any evil counsel that is being orchestrated to cause destruction, the Lord is rescuing you in the name of Jesus. Wrong business partnership. The Lord is rescuing an entrepreneur from a wrong business partnership. Miraculously, a strange divine intervention is going to happen. And the Lord will rescue you because you are a kingdom entrepreneur. You have been rescued from that evil business partnership in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. You're going to pray. The third prayer point. You're going to pray. The third prayer point. We're going to pray the prayer that the blind man prayed. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. You're going to pray, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Let me tell you, the mercies of God breaks every protocol. Sometimes just say, Lord, have mercy and help me. This simple prayer can activate the power of God in a strange way if you pray it with sincerity and in faith. So you're going to pray, Lord, have mercy on me. Intervene in my life. Intervene in my career. Intervene in my business. Intervene in my family. And turn every trouble into a testimony for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Lord, have mercy, intervene. And turn every trouble into a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to cry for his mercy. Begin to cry for his mercy. 
Begin to pray, somebody. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, like blind mouth smells. Yeah. Have pity on me, oh God, in your kindness. In your compassion, oh God, Lord, of my hands. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, God has mercy on me. Rescue us God, let your light continue to shine on me. Your Lord, I will move from in the name of Jesus, we are going to pray. My Father, my Maker, deliver me from my present distress. Now, listen carefully. When you study Psalms 25, verse 17, the Bible says, The troubles of my heart are multiplied. You, are, you will be listening to me right now. There are some present troubles that you are going through right now. You need to cry out, Lord, bring me, deliver me out from my present distress. Any distress I am going through, Lord, intervene and deliver me. Lord, intervene and deliver me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father, my Maker, deliver me from my present distress in the name of Jesus. Deliver me from my present distress in the name of Jesus. Yes, somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Oh, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sing your my heart and my in the name of Jesus. Listen carefully. I feel strongly in my spirit. That is prayer for very important. Listen. When Moses and the children of Israel arrived before the Red Sea, that was a distress. That was the press. Let me tell you. They, I don't, they did not think of the Red Sea when they were running from Egypt. When they arrived before it, when I read that, that scripture, even Moses was surprised. Ha, ha, where did this Red Sea come from now? The Bible records that behind them were the Egyptians. In front of them, the Red Sea. They just distressed. They needed the immediate, 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 immediate intervention of God. Because right behind them, the spoke of Pharaoh, the, the Egyptian army was running after them at a speed. They need an immediate intervention. Urgent distress. They need an immediate intervention. You will be listening to me right now. There is an immediate distress. Urgent them right now. Goodness God can intervene like he did for the Israelites and divided the Red Sea. So you need to understand, if you have an immediate distress, maybe there is a deadline, time is running out. You don't know whether you should go left or right. I know what you can do. Look up. You have looked stressed, you have looked right, you have looked strong, you have looked back. Now, today, look up. Moses looked up and there was an instruction and God did something. And that distress gave way. We're going to take a prayer point again. My father, my maker, 
Deliver me from any present distress. You know your life better. The atmosphere is open. The Holy Spirit is at work right now. Your job is to engage by faith in this place of prayer. You can call that distress by name. Lord, Father, my maker, deliver me from this present distress. You call the distress. Vena. The Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every other name shall bow. That distress has the name. Call it by name and call a higher name. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My Father, my Maker, deliver me from my present distress. Deliver me from my present distress. It could be a career image. God created the heavens and the earth in words of mouth. Father Lord, you know me. Father Lord, your own sis is a man who thing that you do not abandon anyone. You know my own right from the beginning. Father Lord, to you I lift up my voice this morning. Lord, deliver me from God from the Father, may you deliver me from the Lord. Deliver me, O God, deliver my family, O God, from any financial difficulty. Deliver me, O God, deliver my family, O God, and Lord, you will no longer live in my mouth. Father, Lord, you will not live in my mouth. Do not download me, O God, and your wish I am. For my presence is in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, now lift up your hands, let me prophesy and decree over your life as led by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we magnify your name. Lord, we acknowledge your greatness. Father, by your authority, I decree and I declare, intervene in the life of somebody and rescue them from all troubles according to your word. In the name of Jesus, every form of trouble that you are going through, every form of trouble that you are going through by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are experiencing a divine intervention and God is rescuing you from all troubles in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, a blind man cried out unto Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I decree and I declare by the mercies of God, by the mercy of God, whatever trouble you are going through, by the mercy of God, today mark the end in the name of Jesus. Today mark the end in the name of Jesus. Today mark the end in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, and the mention of the name of Jesus, the every day shall bow and every tongue shall confess uh, that Jesus is Lord. Uh, the Bible says that uh, we are seated far above, uh, far above trouble, uh, far above principality and powers. Uh, I stand on the authority. I command every trouble to give way in the name of Jesus. Every financial trouble that is not of God, uh, I command it to give way. Every career trouble that is not of God, I command it to give way. Every evil trouble orchestrated by any principality, orchestrated by any strong man, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I command it to give way today in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, the Lord has the power to bring you out of any distress. Any present distress you are going through right now, any present challenge, any emergency trouble that you are going through now, by the mercies of God, the Lord is pulling you out of that trouble in the name of Jesus. The Lord is pulling you out of that trouble in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord is your fortress. Because the Lord is your refuge. I decree and I declare, you will not be put to shame in the name of Jesus. That trouble will not disappoint you in the name of Jesus. 
If you are sick, raise up your hand. Just lift up your hand as a sign of surrender. If you are sick, raise up your hand. Lord, this is trouble. Sickness is trouble to the flesh. Sickness is trouble to finances. Sickness is trouble to the family. Lord, I stand on your word. You say in your word that when your people cry to you, you will help them. You will rescue them from all trouble. Father, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. I stand on the authority. I command every sickness to give way in the name of Jesus. I command every sickness to give way in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I wash off every sickness in Jesus' name. Let that sickness give way. Let that mental sickness give way. Let that mental sickness give way. You can put your hand where you are sick, where you are feeling pain. The Bible says, out of your bed there shall flow rivers of living waters. The Bible says that the word that speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Put your hand wherever you are sick. I command that pain to give way in the name of Jesus. I command that disorder, that disorder, that disorder. I command it to end now in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not right in your stomach, I command it to come out in the name of Jesus. I command it to come out in the name of Jesus. There's something ungodly in somebody's stomach. You will vomit it out in the name of Jesus. That strange headache, that strange headache that occurs in strange times, that strange headache that occurs in strange times, I command it today marks the end in the name of Jesus. I set the evil altar sponsoring that evil headache on fire in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. That on and off sickness, that on and off sickness that is being sponsored by an evil altar because somebody took your address to an evil altar. I, I, I break that legal stand. I break that chain. I break that chain. I break that chain. I set that dress on fire. I set that altar on fire. To this back the end in the name of Jesus. Divine health is your portion in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Strange pains in the hand. Strange pain in your hand. Strange pain in your hands. Anybody you have strange pain in your hand. I command that pain. Lift up that hand up. I command that pain to give way. I command that pain to give I arrest any spirit sponsoring that pain by authority in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to pray now. I feel led to pray again for divine intervention in any case. I don't know whatever case that you have and you desire God to intervene. By faith, lift up that case before God, I pray. By faith, lift up that case before God, as I pray. By faith, lift up that case before God. Yes. Yes, Lord. These cases, we lift these cases before you. It could be a career case. It could be a career case. It could be a career case. Business case. Lord, we recognize you as our God. Yes, Lord. Yes, divine intervention. Divine intervention. The Bible says, the Bible says in the book of First Peter chapter 3, verse 12, the Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord are looking favorably upon the righteous. I stand on this authority. I decree and I declare that case that you are seeking divine intervention. The eyes of God are looking favorably upon you in the name of Jesus. 
whomever the Lord has favored, the enemy cannot do anything. After today, experience divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. Experience divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. You are applying for government documents. You are applying whatever you are applying for. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. That case that has not gone through unnecessary delay, unnecessary delays in different offices. The Bible says they have to be by the hand of God. By authority, we arrest the heart of anybody delaying that case unnecessarily. In the name of Jesus, we decree and we declare a spot flu of that document in the name of Jesus. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, thank you. Just worship God, somebody. Just worship the King of Kings. Just worship Him. Just tell Him you are good. Worship Him, thank Him for His faithfulness. For His, for his presence, Father, you we are present. Without you, we are nothing. Thank you, Father. Take the glory. Take the honor. Father, to you, Lord. Be all the glory. Yes, Lord. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen. Instructions, please. If you can be in the mood of worship as much as you can today, please be in the mood of worship, okay? Again, as I like, I'll keep on saying this until we, it's part of our past, past of us. Again, we're in our season of fasting and prayers. And if you stay without food the, with the whole day and you don't create time to, to pray or to even worship God, you are just doing a weight loss program, okay? So as you pray, as you go through the day, please find time to read the scriptures, pray for five minutes, for 10 minutes, I'm, I'm giving the short time because many of us are workers, we are business people, and we don't have time. But if you have the time to pray more, please do it. Because it's a season of waiting. It's a season of crying out. And crying out should be intentional. And the Lord will show up for you in Jesus' name. The grace that God has released today, His presence that He has released today, expect the testimony by faith expect a testimony because i know that god is showing up from us all of us in the name of jesus see you tomorrow same time as we end the final day of our fasting and prayers and i know that god will do that which only him can do in jesus name god bless you remember to always invite your friends and your family members and when we share the recorded link in our WhatsApp group, please always be to people that missed it out. You never know where I have received strange testimonies people that are not even in the community because somebody shared the link and they watched it. They, they are blessed, they are transformed, they have encounters, right? Spread the word, be an evangelist, and always invite people in Jesus' name. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Same time. God bless you.